Well, Faisal, despite our efforts to bid for the government since yesterday morning, they've been unable to put anyone up. In a moment, we'll speak to the former schools minister, Nick Gibb, but first we're joined by the Shadow Education Secretary, Tristram Hunt. And I want to sort of put the party political mm. point scoring to the right. bottom because yeah. this is too big a crisis. Yeah. This is a bipartisan crisis, it's a British crisis. Absolutely. And um, what's the explanation? And, and I think Faisal's uh, report there showing that this is a wake-up call uh, in terms of our international uh, competitiveness. So we've got to look at the lessons that we can learn uh, from Singapore, from Shanghai, from Hong Kong, whilst having respect to different uh, uh, cultural norms. Well, one, and, thing and, one, but one very important thing they're not complicated by is a private sector where the middle class is a creamed out and don't therefore have any influence whatever on the uplift of the rest. Yeah, but we're not going to uh, reference to no, another, East Asia Company. We're not going to begin at year zero. What we can learn from these uh, education jurisdictions is teacher quality. That they put enormous emphasis on having a highly motivated, highly trained, qualified teachers in the classroom, just as we heard um, in the report. In Shanghai, they have 240 hours of continual professional development. Their teachers work to MA level, so investing in teacher quality is key. Secondly, collaboration between schools, systems of challenge and partnership. One of the labour policies that worked was the London Challenge that really raised educational attainment uh, in the capital by having a proper collaborative network uh, between schools so that you know, great head teachers could work with other schools, great teachers in some subjects could move into other schools and work with them so that you have a system which raises standards in a locality. Okay. Collaboration, teacher quality. I've, gi I've given you the floor therefore to put out your ideas and that's, yeah. it, that, that's fine. Now we have to deal with the harsh reality that these are Blair's children. These are education, 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 and nothing improved. Well, these are not Labour's kids or coalition uh, but they kids. are. They, these are the they're, kids they're, that they're, they're all our young people. And we did a great they deal in office. They 15 we, from we, the period when, they, we, when the Labour Party came to power. They were just born. And in that period, they did not progress above the, the, the figures that we had six years and 12 years ago. And you're absolutely right, because our international competitors were doing better than us. And, you know, there's no hiding from that. This is, as I've said, a wake-up call. But look, we did a great deal in office. We foregrounded the teaching of English and maths. We introduced the Teach First program, getting bright young graduates into schools. We started the Sponsor Academy program, introducing academies into Bristol, okay, but into you know, London. You... And that helped raise standards and close the attainment gap. But we do you know where the do. figures are worst in this do. country? In Wales. Who's been in power in Wales for 14 years? Labour. Labour has failed in Wales abysmally on education. John, I think these figures are more complicated than that. Wales has difficult questions to answer, but so do does Suffolk, so do does Berkshire. So do does Herefordshire, cities like Wolverhampton as well. So to simply say that one part of the country uh, is, is run down is, is wrong. But look, what's the answer to this? Rather than condemning it, we have to learn the public policy answers. And that's about investing in teacher quality, that's about collaborating. And the fact of the matter is, neither of those two policies are on the government's agenda. OK, well, let, let's turn to the government. As I say, we couldn't get a minister, but we're delighted to have you who were a Gib. minister, Nick Gibb. Uh, let's leave the party political point scoring to the end. Let's Let's talk about what's to be done to rectify this appalling state of affairs. Well, that's why Michael Gove is uh, reforming our education system so fundamentally. He is raising the quality of teachers coming into the profession. He's raised the bar for entry into the teaching profession. He's raising the quality of the standards that teachers have to be trained towards. He's rewriting the curriculum. We have the primary curriculum coming into force next September. That's why you can't attribute these results to the coalition. Uh, we're changing the GCSEs. At the same so time, if you rigorous. look at Poland, for example, they actually study at school two years longer than our people do. Well, there's a very good case for that, and we're saying that we want uh, math to be taught beyond the age of 16. All these reforms are coming into effect. We've had all our six-year-olds are now being tested. They were tested last year. They've been tested this year for their reading, for their phonic decoding. This is a government that's determined to raise standards. And I have to say, a lot of those reforms have been opposed by the Labour Party. This is a damning indictment on Labour's uh, well, but there's a damning uh, in, uh, indictment on all of us because we have a system unique in the world mm. where we cream off the middle classes and have them play no part in driving up education. I don't Seven percent. No, the of charity children commission tries to get these schools involved in in, 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 in uplifting, and mm. some are. 
But in the main, they are away from the fray. And in Korea, in Singapore, it's the middle classes that have what driven the What we have to do uplift. is to try to emulate what they're doing in the independent sector, in the state sector. And that is what the academy's program is about. It's what the free schools mm. program is about, emulating that system. Mm. The independent sector in this country educates just 7% of pupils. 93% of the population attend state schools. What, we are, what Michael Gove is, is seeking to do is to challenge the education establishment that has dominated education policy for decades in this country. And that's what he's trying to do. Well, even Mrs Thatcher, who had the chance, did not take on the teaching unions. No, we had the 1988 Act towards the end of her period in office, and that went some way to challenging uh, the teacher unions, challenging uh, We can't uh, escape the reality that three years of your government, it was a period of this period that those yes. exams were actually taken. Look, we've been right accused, now. Michael Gove has been accused of going far too fast with these reforms. But the primary curriculum, which is ready and to run, only takes effect in schools next year. You need to give schools a chance to implement them. The GCSE reforms, first teaching September 2015, first exams 2017. You've got to give schools, you've got to give the textbook producers time to prepare. We're going as fast as we can. We'll be accused by Labour of going too fast. Uh, and so we, we will see these results improve in the years ahead. Nick Gibb, Tristram Hunt, thank you both very much indeed.